you invite yourself inside the home of a total stranger and then ask him to lock the door so that you couldn't get out if you wanted to? In a sense, this is what you're doing when you accept a ride in an automobile from someone you don't know. There's a girl down on the old Sofa Canyon Road. I think she's hurt. She could use some help. Pegasus 1 to Station B. Request any units in the area to the old Sulphur Canyon Road to respond to my location three miles south of the Halfway House Cafe. We have the possible accident victim in sight and are landing to investigate. Hitchhiking? Well, yes. He, he, he picked me up and we wound up out here. Do you know who he is? No. No, I don't know who he is or anything. Did you get his license number? No. No. I don't, I don't know if this is important, but... He did sign a credit card at the halfway house gas station. I get in the car and these officers will take you to the hospital and get you checked over. No, no, I don't want to go to the hospital. I feel fine. Don't send me to the hospital. Transported to the station. Late that afternoon, sheriff's deputies questioned the gas station attendant, who confirmed the girl's story and located the signed credit slip. A check on the vehicle registration revealed the cardholder's name and address. This man admitted picking up the girl, but he denied harming her in any way. He is at 
advised of his rights, patted down for weapons, and taken to the station for further questioning. I had just gotten off of work, and my boyfriend was supposed to pick me up, but he never showed up to drive me home. So I went to take the bus. It was hot, and I wasn't sure about the bus schedule. Can I give you a lift? No, thanks. What's the matter? Not good enough for you? Oh, no, I, I was just waiting for a bus. Oh, well, good luck, because the last bus left already, about five minutes ago. Come on, I'll give you a lift. I'm going the same way. I don't mind. Look, you might as well. You'd be sitting here all night if you don't. Come on, what do you say? What would you do? Part of the country's no good without a car. I said to my company when they sent me out here, I said, okay, but you better have a car there waiting for me. We're there. Now, <laughs> yeah, but you don't get stuck very often, huh? Yeah, I bet your lover boy's got a nice car for you, doesn't he? <laughs> Probably a convertible, right? Yeah. Convertible's no good out here. It's too hot. You know, you're too nice looking a girl to be uh, waiting for a bus. How old are you, honey? 19. Oh, 19, huh? Oh, <laughs> you're just a little thing, aren't you? Oh, damn it, I'm starting to heat up. I mean, <laughs> the engine, the motor's getting hot. <laughs> Don't you know that stuff's bad for you? Why don't you let me get you something a lot better? Over there. Something real nice, like gin and tonic. What do you say? No, this is fine. Come on. He's got to put a new fan belt in there. It's going to take some time. Why don't you let me buy you a drink? No, I really don't think so. What's the matter? Well, nothing, nothing. Oh, well, look, I'm going to go get a drink. Now, you can stand here, or you can walk all the way back home if you want. It's okay with me. I'm just trying to be friendly. You want to be that way? That's okay with me. Here, I'm going to go get a drink. He had quite a few drinks. Um, I can't remember how many. He wanted to buy me one, so I finally let him. And then after a while, I asked him for 20 cents so that I could call home. And he said, uh, don't worry, honey, I'll take you home. Um, he didn't say anything. He just looked straight ahead. I asked him where we were going, and he said that it was a shortcut, that it was quicker this way. <laughs> Woo, it looks like I kind of made the wrong turn someplace, don't it, honey? I, I think we'd better go back. Oh, sure, sure, we're gonna go back. But now that we're here, we might as well just enjoy the scenery a little, don't you think? Huh? Don't, please, please, I, I want to go back. Come on, I bet you've been up here lots of times in that big convertible, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
I had been to a sales meeting early in the afternoon and uh, didn't go too well. I had a beer or two with a couple of the guys, but uh, I wasn't feeling anything. I was just tired and let down, and I just wanted to get home. I saw this girl standing on the corner. She was, uh, well, it was hard not to notice her. You know the way they dress these days. She was hitchhiking. Hey, hi. Want to give me a lift? I uh, was waiting for the bus, and I missed mine. There won't be another one for hours. I promise not to take you out of your way. I mean, you could drop me anywhere. I'm just going like 20 miles down the road. Please. What would you do? Well, he said he was going to pick me up, but he never showed up, so I'm not going to hang around and wait for him. Mm -hmm. Do you do a lot of hitchhiking? <laughs> Beats walking. Don't you worry sometime about who might pick you up? You're not going to give me any trouble, are you? Me? No, 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 no. I was just thinking. Thinking about what? Well, about my daughter. She's uh, about your age. I'm 21. She's just 18. I better not catch her hitchhiking. Why not? Too many things can happen. You never know. <laughs> yeah, but that's what makes it so exciting. I, I like meeting guys. It's, it's fun finding out about them. Most of them are lonely or looking for something where they wouldn't pick you up in the first place. Uh-oh. I'm starting to heat up. The motor's getting hot. Sorry, but he's going to have to put in a new fan belt. It, it's going to take a half hour or so. Hey, that's okay. Uh, I am thirsty, though. Yeah, me too. Oh, hey. Uh, oh, it's out of order. Hey, hey, I have an idea. Why don't we go in there where it's cool? Bet you we'd get something to drink in there. You really want to? Sure. Come on. Okay. She asked me to buy her a gin and tonic. I was a little surprised, but I thought it would be all right. After all, she was 21. I ordered a drink for each of us. And she started telling me all these personal things about how lonely she was and how she wished she had someone like me for a dad. We had a few more drinks, and then she asked me to take her out of there. The drinks and the heat, but... Mainly it was the way she talked that kind of got to me. She said it was getting late and she'd show me a shortcut. By the time we reached the end of the road, it was obvious we were both thinking about the same thing. We uh, must have taken a wrong turn someplace. Maybe we'd better go back. Yes, yes, we'd better go back. But it's so beautiful here. It's uh, so empty and so beautiful. <laughs> oh, you dirty old man, you. Uh, you don't mean that? <laughs> oh, yes, I'll cut it out. I, I do mean it. No, you don't. Yes, come on. Get your hands off of me! Get out! Get out! She may have fallen once or twice, but that's the last I saw of her. I don't know what happened to her after that. I called the sheriff's office because I got worried about her out there all alone. Whose story do you believe? Both parties were lying to some degree. 
and both were probably telling some truth. But proof of either story, beyond a reasonable doubt, was impossible. Therefore, the case was not filed for prosecution. Remember, if you accept a ride from a stranger or offer one, you could be entering into a dangerous situation in which you have no control and in which you'll not receive the protection due you under the law.